How are we doing, folks? Well, um, the, uh, the van has now done 1,162 kilometers since uh, I put the uh, the new engine and gearbox into it. So um, I'm going to take the opportunity now, after having driven it into work for a couple of weeks, to do a service on it and check everything over and make sure everything is still as it should be. So what I'm going to be doing is just having a look at the oil, making sure that there's no metal fragments in it, um, checking over the gearbox, all the mountings. And, um, but first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to take it for a spin. So uh, the reason I'm taking it for a spin is to heat the oil up so that um, it drains easier. Um, and uh, compression, you know. Anyway, um, right. Basically, uh, there have been a few teething problems which I need to iron out, and uh, that's a uh, part of the thing I'm going to be doing is that. Um, in amongst them is the fact that the. Uh, uh, the engine just, uh, it's, I would imagine it should be putting out about 110, 120 horsepower uh, with, the mods that have been, with the mods that have been done to it and uh, I just don't think it is, to be honest with you, I think it's actually down in power quite a bit um, it, Off the mark, it's alright, first, second gear, maybe third gear but by the time you get into fourth and fifth gear, it's, it's, it's fairly gutless Now I know the gears are spaced out a lot more in the new gearbox than they were in the old one I mean the old one was a 5 speed but if you were doing 70, uh, 75 uh, miles an hour, you were uh, cooking the engine. Like it was spinning like a mad thing. But uh, in this, you know, you're doing 2,000 RPM. So obviously, you know, you're gonna need more power to do that. But, you know, I, I still I still do feel that there is it's something that's just not 100% right. So I need to investigate that. One of the things I did look at was making sure that the throttle cable was actually pulling the, uh, the uh, throttle position sensor all the way open, and it is, so it's not that. Um, I uh, had a look um, uh, at all of the ducts and pipe work and everything like that and everything seems okay. So the next thing really to do is to plug the VCDS cable in and drive the van with it connected and see what, um, see how we're looking. Um, I wanted to look at the turbo boost pressure, inlet air temperature, um, the, uh, I need to have a look at the time, at the pump timing as well too because that might be slightly out and that would certainly give you problems with um, uh, with power, uh, but uh, that being said, it starts it starts on the button whether hot or cold, so it can't be too far out. Um, and the other thing as well too is, unfortunately, another issue I'm having is the CV joints are clicking like mad, um, and uh, particularly on a bend, and um, they just don't sound happy at all. Now, um, you know, some people might say, ah, they'll be fine, but if they're clicking, they're not fine. Um, there's no point in me going to all the bother of doing this modification work and just saying something's going to be fine when it's clearly not. Um, so I'm going to take the CV joints off, I'm going to inspect them and if they're serviceable I'm going to repack them and reinstall them. If they're not serviceable I'm going to change them with something along the lines of uh, Porsche 944 CV joints. Which unfortunately are, they have the Porsche price tag on them but you know if it, if it resolves the reliability issues then you know it's worth doing. Um, I'm also going to flush the coolant system because uh, I only kind of just sort of did a half flush if you know what I mean like I didn't drain down the radiator I just topped it up with the intention of just flushing all the gunk out and then uh, doing a, a proper flush after a clock up a bit of miles just in case there was any uh, nasties residing in the engine block. Um, what else? Uh, yeah I mean then it's just a case of kind of checking over everything as well too. One of the things that people were saying to me as well too was the uh, gearbox breather setup might be, um, uh, the, it, you know, I, I'm, I should expect that it's going to be spilling gearbox oil out the breather all the time because it's right at the, the top top breather is right over the diff. I have not found that at all and uh, I actually put a catch bottle in to uh, allow for that press doors are swinging open and closed behind me is wrecking my head and um, I put a catch bottle there and there is nothing in the catch bottle so the, the gearbox seems happy enough another issue I had was um, I put four and a half litres of engine oil in the engine when it was on the engine crane in the garage and then with all the cranking and all of the kind of you know messing around with it and that as well too trying to get it to start uh, levels may have dropped and all that as well too I might have lost a little bit of oil but there's nothing showing up on the dipstick uh, with the, the van with the engine installed in the van the way it is at the moment 
So I don't know if I have enough oil, too little oil, or uh, or what. So I wasn't going to top it up until it was on the dipstick and find out seven liters of oil and end up blowing every oil seal in the engine. So I left it be um, for the thousand miles. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain the oil off and I'm going to put four and a half liters in and I'm going to check the dipstick again and see how we're looking. And um, if it, ah, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Some settling of contents may occur during transport. Anyway, <laughs> that's what happens, folks, when you don't um, make sure everything is stable in the van before you go for a spin. Anyway, it's all right. It's only just a better. Um, but uh, yeah, um, like my overall impression after a thousand miles is that it's nice to drive. Um, as I said, I would like a little bit more power. If it's there to have, I'll take it. If it's not, I'll live with it. Um, I'm not going to go modifying the engine to get more power out of it. Um, the, uh, what I might do is I might pop over to a garage actually and fill it up because that's a thing. I, I actually noted how much mileage I had um, clocked up uh, or what the, the I, I filled the tank to the brim and I want to see how much mileage I've done. Um, in the amount of fuel I've used, so I'll pop into a garage now, and we'll uh, we'll rim the tank again, see how much uh, see how much fuel we've used, because uh, I want to get an idea of the um, miles per gallon. So uh, yeah, let's do that, and um, we'll uh, we'll get stuck into the service then afterwards, and I'll report back with my findings. Okay, so um, I didn't actually stop at the garage because I realised I hadn't got my wallet with me. So uh, they tend to want money when you put, petrol, put diesel in their vehicles. So uh, I'll go back and do it afterwards. Um, anyway, look at uh, we'll uh, we'll come back to that. The other thing I've noticed as well too is that's nearly empty now, and uh, there is no way uh, that was uh, four and a half liters. So <laughs> yeah, um, that's obviously uh, our issue there. So um, I have the f uh, f oil filter slackened anyway, so I'm going to. Uh, drop that off now um, but what we'll do is we'll just pour a little bit of fresh oil through there um, just to flush out any nasties and uh, do up the drain plug and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do a filter. One of the handy little things about T25 vans is, or T3s, whatever you want to call them, is that they have this little feature here which is the, uh, the reg plate uh, flips down and you've got your uh, water, uh, water tank there and this lad, now how many of you knew with T25s that this happens? You have, a tele you have a telescopic spout. Everybody likes a telescopic spout. So uh, it makes uh, putting oil in a little bit easier. So um, yeah, so what I've got is I've got half a litre of, uh, what are we running? 10W40 semi-synth of uh, top oil, which will do nicely. And um, uh, I've got uh, five litres up there, I have a half a litre in it there, I've still got a drain plug open. I'm going to pour this through the engine, flush it out, and um, then uh, we know then that that four and a half litres can go into there. So, um, yeah, without further ado, let's, uh, let's do that. One of the things I mentioned was the um, uh, oil catch bottle for the gearbox. Now, that's only a temporary measure. Um, now that I'm happy that it's not spitting oil out all over the place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a breather filter for that and I'm going to top, tie it up, up above the uh, fuel filter there. Incidentally, I'm going to be changing the fuel filter in all of this as well too. So um, it might skew my reading a little bit of the uh, of the uh, miles per gallon we're getting, but um, if I fill it up with a can of diesel in the garage before I put it on, it won't do too much damage uh, to my numbers. So uh, anyway, you can see there's no uh, there's no oil in that, um, which is grand. So. Um, yeah, um, anyway, I'm just waiting for the last of the uh, the oil to drain off into the pan down there and then we'll pop that filter off. The reason I'm waiting is because the, uh, I've only got one pan and they very conveniently placed the uh, oil filter on its side in these, pretty much. And it always runs down the sump down the bottom there and uh, I need to have the um, pan in place to catch any oil that comes out of it. Uh, what I do is usually put a plastic bag over the filter and just try and drop it into the plastic bag, so we'll try and do that. Okay, so I have the um, plastic bag wrapped around the filter and uh, what we'll do is, I've actually loosened the filter enough so that it, it, the o-ring was literally just touching on it. Now the oil should be running down into the bag. Probably found the one crease where it allows it to run down the outside of the block, but that's why I have the drip tray underneath it as well too. So, I'll take that off. And, there we go. 
one fairly piggy looking oil filter for a uh, one that's only just done a thousand miles so or a thousand kilometers so um yeah worth changing anyway so we will um i can't get it out one-handed so uh, i'll come back to you in a sec Okay, so here's the new filter. Uh, it's a Wix filter rather than the Mela filter I was using before. So um, what we're going to do is we need to lubricate that O-ring that's on it first of all. And we'll just spin it on and we'll tighten it by hand. Now, you do not tighten these with a tool, okay? I got a Mark II Golf before and that Mark II Golf, the hassle I had getting the oil filter off because the last owner had stitched it on with a, 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 a crescent wrench or something like that. I actually, man, I had to cut the cut the filter apart and pr try and bend the flange away from the uh, from the oil water heat exchanger. And holy Jesus, what a nightmare that was! So uh, yeah, please don't do that. Um, hand tight, just a good firm hand tight. It's not going anywhere, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's all you need to do. So anyway, let's get let's get some oil. I'll uh, again, the whole operation is a very it's very difficult to do with. Uh, uh, one hand holding the camera so okay so there is now four and a half liters of oil in the engine there is a new filter on which i uh, filled with oil and uh, everything is looking good so uh, the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to crank the engine over without starting it uh, to develop oil pressure so in order to do that what you would do generally is disconnect the fuel cut off solenoid on top of here so uh we'll uh, we'll do that and um We'll just um, spin it over and uh, just make sure our oil pressure light goes out. And um, once our oil pressure light goes out, then we can start it and leave it ticking over and see if everything's all right. Okay, so let's uh, let's spin it over and we'll watch for that oil pressure light going out. Okay, we also don't want to cook the starting motor, so... Right, so a bit of oil should have circulated by now, so um, we'll uh, we'll try and uh, crank it over again. Uh, and we'll actually let it start, but we're not going to rev it. There you go, that's all you need. Right, so we've got oil pressure. Now, you see, if I hadn't cranked it over like that, that would have taken a lot more time to go out. Um, so... Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's grand. So that's the oil change done. Let's go over and just make sure everything's all right at the back. Okay, that's grand. Right, the so next thing we'll do is change the fuel filter. According to the motor factors, um, the uh, JCB filter fits, so uh, that's fair enough. Um, we'll try it. Uh, I, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I'm going to just offer it up against the old one and make sure it does before we uh, uh, go and dispose of the old filter because uh, that'd be a bit of a shame. Um, or before I even uh, fill this one with uh, with fuel. So um, yeah, obviously I need to fill this with fuel because otherwise uh, you'll end up um, letting air through the pump um, and it may keep running or it may not. And if it doesn't keep running, then you have an awful pain. You have a pain in the face on your hands um, trying to bleed the fuel system. So uh, anyway, yeah, let's, uh, let's spin that one off. I've already loosened it. And uh, the, the earlier T25s used to spin on filter, the later ones, they had to take the pipes off and there was a um there was a re the return went through them what, what the purpose of that was i'm not entirely sure if you know just put it in the comment i'm actually curious to be honest with you yeah we're looking good here so uh the van's getting a jcb fuel filter it's grand that'll do nicely so uh yeah it's uh the o-ring is the same the threads look the same um so uh let's uh fill that jcb one fuel and get it on there I kind of like the JCB fuel filter in there actually, it's a, it's a little bit different, isn't it? Um, hand tight again, uh, I lubricated the o-ring on it with diesel um, by pouring it all over the place from the jerry can anyway, so it kind of went on it. Um, so uh, that's uh, that's happy out there and uh, obviously full of diesel, so um should be no issues with the engine running now. So we'll just start and just get that, uh, get that diesel running through and make sure everything's 100%. 
and you might see a couple of air bubbles coming through the fuel line. See a few there, all right, yeah, but nothing I'd be worried about. Just need that to do its thing. You might hear the engine stumble. No. See, a lot of that diesel is going in there. It's going straight out the return line and back to the tank. It's not all getting used. Satisfaction has been achieved. Okay, so oil and fuel filters have been done. I checked the oil level on the dipstick and um, it's not a million miles away from where it should be actually. Um, maybe a little, showing a little on the low side of things, but like, I mean, let's say if I put a, a pint of oil or half a litre of oil in there, um, that would probably bring it up to the mark. So, you know, let's just allow for a margin of error there. I don't think it needs to be that accurate. Um, okay, so next thing we need to do is we need to drain the coolant system. And that is the bit I'm not looking forward to because it's going to be a messy, awful job. And uh, we have to drain both ends. We have to drain the, the uh, header tank and the block at this end and we have to drain the radiator at the front. So um, let's, uh, let's stop talking about it and just get stuck in. Okay, so um, I have now flushed and um, refilled the coolant system in this and um, everything looks good. Um, I have a little method for uh, bleeding the coolant system. I actually did a separate video on it, which works a treat. Um, basically, uh, in summary, what you do is you um, yeah, fill up the coolant system as much as you can with the engine off, start the engine, keep filling it, and then what you do is, uh, when you have as much coolant in as it'll let you put in um, before the header tank is full, you uh, turn off the engine and make up one of these, which is basically a tyre valve in a piece of rubber tube with a jubilee clip, and you pop it onto that, and you use a foot pump to um, put a header pressure on the tank, and with the header pressure on the tank, open the bleed screw on the radiator and let the air out of it. And then when you've done that and you close the bleed screw, then you just top up the coolant bottle again and away you go. So it uh, works a treat and uh, the, it, you basically have the job done in five or ten minutes. So anyway, um, that's that done. Uh, the next thing to do is, and this is going to uh, proceed a bit of a rant to be honest with you, because I dropped the van in to get the uh, brakes done as part of the, the um, CVRT DOE road, uh, roadworthiness test basically. And they just didn't do a good job. I mean, I had to bring it back to them and they still, I'm still not 100% happy with the brakes, to be honest with you. They just don't seem to know how to do drum brakes in that garage. So, like, I believe I'd do a better job myself anyway. So first of all, I need to do, what I need to do is I need to bleed them. Then I need to adjust the handbrake so that it's not coming up out of the floor. Um, and, uh, like, there's air in the system. I mean, like, I was put, reversing onto the driveway and there's a slope on the driveway. So as I was, re as I was reversing, I pressed the brake pedal and it, the bloody thing nearly went to the floor. So... There's definitely something up with them. You know, uh, they weren't like that when I dropped in. The only different, the only problem was the fact that there was a uh, handbrake imbalance. Everything else was all right. So, anyway, look at, yeah. Sometimes I find it very hard to get decent mechanics to tell you the truth. But um, you know, it's uh, that's that's just a bugbear of mine. Anyway, we're gonna have a look at the brakes and we're gonna see if we can get them sorted out. And also the. Uh, cooling fan, the radiator fan is rubbing on a shroud, so we need to address that. And um, then uh, at another stage, what I'll do is I'll take the CV joints off, and we're going to have a look at them. All right, so I had to uh, investigate further and see what the hell was going on with the brakes on this because um, I uh, jacked up the the van and. Um, the uh, the drum was just or the wheel was just spinning freely with the uh, handbrake off. There should be a slight drag there, and there wasn't. So I took it off and. The adjuster's on the wrong way around. That long part should be at the back, up against the, the shoe. The short part should be around here. They said to me that the adjuster was nearly wound out to its last. Well, it's no wonder it was nearly bloody wound out to its last if it's on wrong. So uh, I need to take that adjuster off and put it on the right way around. Uh, I have to do it on both sides as well too. You know, it really irritates me when you have to pay people, to, when you pay people to do a job and you end up having to do it your bloody self. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to take that off, I'm going to put it on the right way around um, and uh, then I'm going to get it all properly adjusted. And um, yeah, anyway, oh well. That's the way it's supposed to be. Right, so now I need to go and adjust the, adjust the brakes and get them all set up again, and I need to bleed them, and I need to set up the handbrake, and I need to do everything that the fucker's supposed to do, or were supposed to do when I paid them to do it. Anyway, can you tell I'm a little bit pissed off? 
Okay, so the brakes are adjusted now anyway, and um, they uh, they really needed an adjustment. They were miles out, obviously, because the adjusters were in wrong. I had to take them out, um, and uh, the handbrake is no longer coming out of the floor anymore. So, um, yeah, uh, it just goes to show. Half the jobs I do on um, cars myself are simply because of the fact that I find it very hard to find mechanics I can actually trust to do the job right myself. I mean, it's it's a ludicrous situation, but anyway, um, so the back brakes are done, the oil change is done, the coolant swap is done, the um, new uh, fuel filter is in, and um, I also did a little bit of rewiring up at the dashboard, so that now, when you turn on the fog light, the little light comes on when you turn it on, which I like. Isn't that nice? I thought so. So uh, actually I was able to pick up the, the right bulb holder and everything in the local motor factors. Um, there is a, there's a great motor factors in, uh, down the road for me um, with a couple of um, lads in their 50s in there and they, they know their stuff, you know. It's, I tell you one thing, that's one thing, it, if you find a motor factors that you can trust, that's, a, that's worth its weight in gold alone. If you can find a mechanic you can trust, never let that guy go. <laughs> So um, anyway, look folks, I think we'll leave it there anyway. I've accomplished quite a lot today. Now I'm just going to tidy up, throw the wheels back onto the van and um, we'll call it at that. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in a future video. Am I a man or am I a Muppet? I'd say I'm probably a bit of a Muppet because uh, when you take the van off the jacks, um, when you've been adjusting the back brakes, put the handbrake on before you... Uh, <laughs> before you let it down uh, because uh, it was my socket set my trusty Ting socket set that stopped it from rolling any further that and me frantically jumping into the driver's seat and hitting the brake ah uh, yeah